Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at an Amazon solar panel. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've gotta to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. All right, so I wanted to take a look at this solar panel today and compare it to a power film. Uh, before we get into it, let me say right up front, uh, well, this is a spoiler alert. Yes, I would recommend this panel to somebody just getting into the game or somebody that maybe wanted a backup panel to their power film. It's not quite as good as the power film, but it really shocked me as to how well it did during testing. So, not that this is an unboxing video, but I do want to show you guys a couple of things that came in the box with the solar panel. Now, I've had it out over the last couple of weeks doing some testing with it. Uh, you do get a little, uh, eh, pretty low quality case that comes with it, and honestly, I didn't even bother hanging on to that. The other thing you'll get in there with it is uh, some instructions. We don't need that. And then a bag of uh, different types of connectors. And honestly, I can say I will probably throw just about every bit of this uh, Chinesium cables in the trash. Save one. There is one decent uh, little connector in here. It's a 5.5 uh, millimeter, I believe it is, uh, to 5.5 millimeter. I will probably hang on to it. It's pretty decent quality. I might also hang on to uh, the little connectors that come in here with it. These are for uh, different sizes of uh, our adapters for different laptops and other things that might take a barrel connector. I'm not even sure what this one is over here on the end. But I might hang on to those as well. The rest of it, well, it's just garbage and I'm not interested. Now, let's talk about the panel. The panel comes in, I paid right around 140 bucks for this panel. They've got it marked down now. Uh, I saw it over uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday for right around 100 bucks. I think now, uh, as of today, or maybe it was yesterday when I looked, it was 109. So great value uh, for this type of panel. Now this is a 60 watt foldable solar panel, uh, monocrystalline, I believe it is. When you open it up, it does have this little charging port here. Now I haven't even tested the USB ports. I guess it's something I really should do and see if there's any chance that uh, that would power a Raspberry Pi. But what I did, there's some string in there I don't need. What I did is I made up just a little bitty adapter that has a 5.5 millimeter barrel connector on one side and power poles on the other. And then I have a longer extension cord that's power poled on both ends to go from the solar panel over to my solar charge controller. That way I might want to stay in the shade during the summer, but move the panel out into the sun. It does give me a little bit of capability to do that. Now let's talk about weight. The weight of the TP solar panel is three pounds and 14 ounces. Let's compare that to the PowerFilm 30 watt panel. And the power film panel comes in at roughly one pound, seven ounces. Now, something to keep in mind, the TP solar panel is a 60 watt panel and my power film is only a 30 watt. They do offer a 30 watt version of the TP solar panel. I didn't go that route because it looked like from uh, what I was reading, the max output voltage was around 15 volts and the 60 watt comes in, I believe that's around 19 volts. So a little bit more uh, voltage out of this one versus the 30 watt. But we have to keep in mind as we go through this series of tests that we're about to jump into, that uh, you know one of them is a 60 watt and one of them is a 30 watt panel. So keep that in mind as we're going through this series of tests. 
Now, one other thing I want to show you before we jump into the actual side-by-side -side comparison is how large this panel is. And I'm going to try to back up here and give you a pretty good idea of how large that panel is. So, uh, fairly small to be a 60-watt panel. And like I said, I've been pleasantly surprised uh, with, with this panel through the tests that I was doing. But let's go ahead and jump outside and let's take a look at how this panel compares to the PowerFound panel. Okay, so let's take a look at both of these panel on a completely cloudy day. I've got nothing but overcast skies today and I have both of the solar panels laying flat on the ground facing the sky. Now we've got two different cables. This particular cable here is the one connected to the Amazon solar panel and the plain black one is the one connected to the PowerFilm solar panel. So let's go ahead and plug up. We'll start with the PowerFilm panel. And it looks like we're getting 0 0.06 amps out of that particular panel. Now let's compare that to the Amazon solar panel. We'll disconnect that one and we'll plug this one up. And we've got 0.13 amps. So as you would expect, we're getting about twice uh, the amount of amperage out of the Amazon panel since it is a 60 watt panel but not, uh, not really a big difference on a completely overcast sky. Okay, so now I've got both of the solar panels hung up off of the side railing of my deck. It is a perfectly cloudless sky, wall-to-wall -wall sunshine today, and the sun is coming in at about a 45 degree angle from the panels. Currently what you're looking at is the PowerFilm uh, 30 watt solar panel connected up and it looks like we're getting uh, roughly 1.1 amps, 1.09 amps out of the charge controller. So let's go ahead and swap that over and let's compare that to the power or the uh, TP-Link solar panel off of Amazon. So I'll go ahead and disconnect that one. And we'll take the cable for the TP-Link and go ahead and plug it in. And off of the TP-Link, it looks like we're getting somewhere around 1.9 amp hours uh, of, of energy generated from the panel. So now remember, this is with the sun at a 45 degree angle to the panels. So I really do expect the uh, power film panel to outperform uh, with the angle of that sun. The TP-Link is going to require more uh, maintenance as the day goes along to make sure that the panel is pointed more direct at the sun. Okay, so here we are again. Uh, once again, it is a perfectly blue sky day. There's absolutely not a cloud in the sky. The difference though in this particular clip is the sun is almost at a 90 degree angle to the panels and both panels are still hanging on the railing of my deck. So what I've got hooked up right now is the PowerFilm 30 watt panel and you can see that it is producing right around 1.3 amps. So let's go ahead and change that out. Now the amps did drop because I am putting a shadow on the panel. But let's go ahead and remove the power film and connect up the TP-Link solar panel. And you can see that the TP-Link is putting out about 2.6 amps. So if we doubled the power film, uh, you would get about the same output. So if we had a 60 watt power film panel instead of the 30 watt, you would be getting roughly the same output. So the big advantage here is you don't have to babysit the power film as much uh, in keeping it in exactly the right position, you know, orientated towards the sun. Uh, that is much more critical when you're looking at the TP-Link. All right, guys, so here's something that you definitely need to know about the difference between these two panels. 
and that's how much the shade affects a particular panel. And this is where you're going to see a big difference between the Amazon TP solar panel and the PowerFilm 30 watt version. So right now I've got the 30 watt uh, panel hooked up by PowerFilm. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my hand and place it over a portion of the panel. So we'll go ahead and place my hand over that panel and you'll be able to see how much the amperage drops with that much shading over uh, one of the panels of the power film. Okay, so now I have the TP solar panel uh, connected up and I'm going to do the same thing. Now let me apologize, I'm just going to have to put some writing over the screen to uh, do a calculation of a percentage to see how much it drops with just my hand being placed over it. I can't look down uh, through the camera that's beneath me and uh, the sunshine and all, I just can't see the meter very well. But there's my hand over the TP solar panel. So I'm covering roughly the same amount of uh, the panel up when I do that, but you're going to see a much greater reduction of power production out of the TP solar panel versus the power film. And that's just where the power film really shines. Uh, if you're having to constantly worry about shadows coming across your solar panel, you're going to find that the power film panel is much easier to manage throughout the day. All right, so let's kind of wrap this up here and let's take a look at where the TP solar panel falls short. I've got a few notes here. Uh, one of the big places that it falls short is when the panel is orientated 45 degrees from the sun versus 90 degrees where it's facing dead on to the sun. Uh, the TP solar panel suffered 25% loss of power generation when it was at a 45 degree angle. The power film panel only suffered a 17% loss. So uh, there's where the, the power film, you know, really comes through because you're not going to have to pay as much attention to it as the day goes along to make sure that it's orientated exactly at the sun. Now, both panels will perform better if you do take that time and keep them 90 degrees to the sun. The big, big difference is when those panels are partially shaded. We saw only a 7% loss with the power film when I shaded it with my hand uh, versus 52% loss when I shaded the TP solar panel with my hand. So that's a huge difference in partially covering just a small area on each panel. So again, if you're going to have shadows coming uh, across your panel as the day goes along, uh, you're going to lose uh, a lot more power with the TP solar panel than you would uh, the same power film laying out there beside it or hanging beside it. So those are, uh, that's where the difference really comes in uh, between these two panels. When they're both in full sun, there's not a lot of difference in them. The other thing that I can't speak of is durability for the TP solar panel over a long term. I've only owned this panel for a couple of weeks now uh, and got these initial tests done. I've been dragging the power film panel that I own out uh, into various locations and I have to stay, say that the build quality and the long term durability of the power film is absolutely outstanding. So you definitely can't go wrong if you've got the budget, go ahead and get the power film. You will see a difference uh, that you pay for uh, or you pay the extra money for. But if you're on a budget uh, and you're looking for something that's a third of the cost, the TP-Link you can't go wrong with. If you want a backup panel maybe uh, to your power film, I think the TP solar panel is a great option. So there you have it, guys. You'll have to make up your own minds. If you like this video, please be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.